How 90 Mins are 21 fared in the Euro 2020 last 16. The drama at Euro 2020 is increasing round by round, and the stars who make up 90 Mins are 21 are having a large say. 18 of the 21 made it through to the last 16 with their nations, and though not everyone made it onto the pitch as the nervo meter heads into overdrive, plenty played large roles in their sides progressing to the quarter-finals. Let's take a look at how they got on in the last 16. Williams played 50 minutes in Wales' 4-0 defeat to Denmark, playing an unfortunately large role in Kasper Dolberg's second goal. The Liverpool fullback cleared the ball straight to the nice striker, and the mountain became bigger and bigger for Wales, to climb before it inevitably became insurmountable. Damsgaard has started Denmark's last three games, and is yet to put a foot wrong. He got an hour against Wales, looking dangerous throughout and setting up Dolberg's first strike will almost certainly start again against the Czech Republic in the quarter-finals. Italy's tight encounter with Austria was a nail-biter, so much so that young Raspadori wasn't afforded a chance off the bench. Baumgartner scored the decisive goal against Ukraine to send Austria through Group C as runners-up, but was a tad more subdued against Italy as his side looked to contain their heavily favoured opponents. He was excellent defensively, making four tackles, before being substituted late on for Alessandro Schopp. The Netherlands might have been favourites to surge past the Czech Republic, but De Ligt's red card 10 minutes after halftime changed all that. The Juventus star got all tangled up with Patrick Schick and handled the ball on the edge of the area. He was sent off and the Orange lost 2 0. Gravenberch could only watch as manager Frank de Boer turned to Quincy Proms, Wout Weghorst, Steven Burgess, and Jurian Timber to get the Netherlands back into the game. He exits the tournament having made two appearances, including a start against North Macedonia. By the time 18 year old Lazek entered the fray against the Netherlands, the Czechs were very much in run down the clock mode. Nevertheless, the Sparta Prague forward got four touches of the ball as his side eased themselves over the line. Somewhat understandably, Doku was left on the bench as Belgium squeezed past Portugal. However, the 18 year old's impressive performance against Finland in the group stage shows he's a dangerous option for Roberto Martinez should he use him against Italy. Unfortunately for Felix, his Euro 220 campaign was wrecked by injury and fitness issues, meaning his brief cameo against Belgium was his only appearance of the tournament. He did well during his brief outing, making the Selecao look a whole lot more threatening in attack but that didn't stop Roy Keane laying into him afterwards. A frustrating tournament for sporting CP youngster Mendes. He made no appearances in the group stage, having picked up a muscle injury after the first game, and watched from the sidelines as his crashed out in the last 16. Brighter times are ahead for the 19-year-old. We could call Pedri's performance against Croatia a mixed bag, but even if he did score an own goal he was still brilliant. The Barcelona prospect consistently demanded the ball and pulled the passing strings in midfield, helping Spain enjoy all sorts of freedom on Croatia's right-hand side. Switzerland should be seriously worried about him. Probably didn't expect to play a period of extra time when he was brought on in the 88th minute, just moments before Mario Pasalic scored a dramatic equaliser. However, the Manchester City forward soon saw Alvaro Morata bag Spain's fourth and decided to get in on the act later, rounding off a 5-3 victory with a strike of his own. England beat Germany the other day, if you hadn't heard, but Foden was nowhere to be seen. Gareth Southgate's change in system meant the likes of Foden, Jack Grealish and Bukayo Saka were all scrapping for one space on the wing. Saka got the nod, meaning Foden will have to wait until Saturday to make his next impression. In a world of Foden's, Grealish's, Sancho's, and Rashford's, it's Saka who is getting the starting spot in England's attack right now alongside Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling. He gave Antonio Rudiger plenty of grief down Germany's left, though his influence did wane in the second period, and he was replaced by Grealish. Decent substitution, that. With Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips firm favourites in midfield, Bellingham has some work to do to get some minutes in the knockout stages. Jordan Henderson got the knot as the three Lions' late enforcer substitute, so the Borussia Dortmund teenager had to watch the chaotic joy from the bench. Musiala showed his game-changing ability against Hungary in the group stage, but by the time he came on against England the match was already over. There was no time to make an impact and the 18-year-old leaves the tournament with two substitute appearances under his belt. Kulisevsky was bright without doing too much damage to Ukraine's defense and Sweden's last 16 defeat. A positive coronavirus test disrupted his preparations for the tournament and he didn't look as fit as he might have been, coming off midway through the first period of extra time. 
slightly fortunate to pick up an assist for Emil Forsberg's deflected strike, Isak just couldn't provide the goal threat Sweden otherwise needed against Ukraine. However, he's been brilliant for the majority of the tournament and will likely enjoy success on the international stage in future competitions for the Scandinavian nation.